you could leave me with one piece of advice, what would it be? Make mistakes, but don't regret them. Learn from them. Because regrets are the hardest things to carry when you get older. I don't think you understand the power that you truly possess. Even in the darkest times, which you may even be experiencing right now, you still remain. You cannot be destroyed. Your soul, the life force behind those eyes, is the most powerful force that exists. Evil could open up Earth's core and hurl you down. It could cast you into an endless void. But again, you still remain. Why is that? What does that mean? It means that you are the decider. You decide your fate. You decide who wins as you bear the gift of choice. Everybody wants to be a star, but they don't understand that stars shine brightest at night. When you're going through the darkness, when you're going through the hard times, that's when the champions shine the brightest. That's when it's go time. That's when it's really time to put in the work. Listen, you're here because you know if you want your life to be different, you have to change, right? If you want your life to change, you have to change. The key to achieving success in any area of your life comes from your ability to change yourself. And a lot of times changing yourself comes from changing your mind first, reprogramming your mind to change your old patterns, to change your old beliefs, your old programs, and your thoughts, your habits, and your beliefs are your driving forces behind your actions. So if you can understand the psychology and the science that's behind mental reprogramming, then you can start to take charge of your life and create the future that doesn't look like your past. Remind yourself that it's not about being perfect. It is about constantly putting one foot in front of the other, taking it moment by moment, step by step not getting too ahead of yourself, right? Still keeping the vision and the goal and the dream at the forefront of your mind, knowing where you're trying to go, but understanding that it's a journey. And in this journey, you're gonna make mistakes. In this journey, you're gonna fall down. But every time you fall down, every time you make a mistake, every time you mess up, there's a lesson in it for you. There's an opportunity for growth. There's an opportunity to get back up and take the next right step. Right, And that's why this journey is so beautiful, because you learn so much about yourself. It's about being open and constantly trying to progress each and every day. What happens when I decide for myself that I'm going to do something different? I'm going to have setbacks, I know. But if I'm feeling bad, that doesn't mean I'm doing bad. That doesn't mean I am bad. That doesn't mean that I can't still take some action. Because, yeah, nothing changes and nothing changes, man. You know, it's always a little bit frustrating to me when, when people have a negative relationship with failure. Failure is a massive part of being able to be successful you have to get comfortable with failure yet you have to actually seek failure failure is where all of the lessons are successful people fail a lot they fail a whole lot more than they succeed but they extract the lessons from the failure and they use that the the energy and they use the wisdom to come around to the next phase of success truly understand that these are your greatest years the years that will either make you successful or entrap you into mediocrity for the rest of your life. So please, make sure you make the most out of them because your time is limited. You have to be okay with being misunderstood. You have to be okay with being rejected. You have to be okay with not thinking like the 99%. If you want to lead, you have to lead from a place of confidence. And the worst thing you want to be is be a follower that follows followers. Problem is right now, there's a lot of softness in the generation of entitlement of what I think I should be able to do. I should be able to enjoy my college years. I should be able to have a social life. I should be able to 
insert whatever you want, and that's fine. It'll just come at the cost of something else. And I'm not the one who says like, this is right or wrong. I just say it is that way. There is only so many minutes and there's a trade that you're going to be willing to make. And the people who will win are the ones who are willing to trade the most for the thing they want. And that oftentimes means you won't be able to go out as much. You won't be able to attend the birthday parties. You won't be able to, that stuff will suffer. Can't believe in yourself without believing in possibility. Yeah. And you can't believe in possibility without believing in yourself. The belief that they could heal has to be installed. I just started disbelieving again. I started doubting and I had to get back and change my state and, and start believing again. And I think if you keep doing that, you believe, you behave, you become. What if I fail? Oh, but my darling, what if you fly? I love that because it's true. Why not entertain the best case scenario? Why not flip your mindset into believing in yourself? What if it all works out? What if this is the best decision I've ever made? What if this is beyond my wildest dreams? What if I try and I not only fly, but I soar? And the fact is, if you try, you will fly in a new direction. It is true. Feels like I get sucked into this negative state of mind so fast it doesn't even feel like I have a choice. It just, it, it feels like life is throwing me around and I have no say in where it goes. I understand. This is for no other reason than that evil fears you. It sees your power. It sees what will happen if you realize your full potential. And therefore it will do anything and everything to make you blind to it. It will find your weak points and it will attack them relentlessly until you give in. You know, people get up every day, they do the same thing. They tell themselves they're going to change their life one day, and they never do. I'm going to change my life. Hey, bro, you can hit the reset button today. If you don't like whoever you've been up to this point, you can just stop being that person. Like today, you can decide to change the way you act, the way you behave. Every single day, including today, is an opportunity for you to hit the reset button on your entire personality, your work ethic, your discipline, your values. You can transform your entire being starting right now. The way that you get better at making decisions is making decisions. See, it's not that you have a hard time making a decision. It's that you're unwilling to make the wrong decision. Almost every single decision that you make in life, you can change or reverse. If you drop out of school, you can go back. If you break up with someone and realize, oh my God, that was wrong, you can tell them. And being able to make the wrong decision is how you make progress. There are no right or wrong decisions, ironically. There's just decisions. And the second that you make a decision, you now learn something. It's not about being right. It's about being willing to move forward and learn something from it. That what you are after is not a career or a profession. It is not a yearly income goal. It is not a car or a lifestyle. What you are after is a feeling. You want to feel free. You want to feel a sense of control. You want to feel capable and accomplished. You want to feel like you have a clear purpose and you want to feel like you are fulfilling that purpose. It is much deeper than a dream job or a lifestyle. Your soul is craving to feel and you do not have enough of these feelings to satisfy that craving. This is what we are here to fix. This discomfort stems from a poor mental framework. It has nothing to do with anything in the physical realm. You've adopted habits, behaviors, and thought patterns from your surroundings your entire life. Many of these behaviors and thought patterns are faulty and limiting. This is what I call a poor foundation. In order to fix this problem, we need to recreate the foundation our mental framework is built upon so that we can, with time, go on to build a strong and optimized mental framework. 
which will allow us to properly pursue these feelings that we are after and succeed in doing so. Find the others. Admit it. You aren't like them. You're not even close. You may occasionally dress yourself up as one of them, watch the same mindless television shows as they do, maybe even eat the same fast food sometimes. But it seems that the more you try to fit in, the more you feel like an outsider. Watching normal people as they go about their automatic existences. For every time you say club passwords like have a nice day and weather's awful today, eh? You yearn inside to say forbidden things like tell me something that makes you cry or what do you think deja vu is for? Face it, you even want to talk to that girl in the elevator. But what if that girl in the elevator and the balding man who walks past your cubicle at work are thinking the same thing? Who knows what you might learn from taking a chance on a conversation with a stranger? Everybody carries a piece of the puzzle. Nobody comes into your life by mere coincidence. Trust your instincts, do the unexpected, find the others. It's the human condition to be average. It's not to be as good as you can be. You know, it's the human condition to survive. Just get along, be average. It's special to get somebody to be the best that they can be, to understand the work ethic and how important it is to earn it, and you reap what you sow. If the person you are competing against loves the process, you are never gonna beat them in the long run. I mean, there's no chance. You might beat them in the short run. It's like the person who loves climbing is going to climb much higher than the person who just wants to get the view from the summit. Point blank, because they love it. They're gonna do everything. They're gonna get better at it. They're gonna research. They're gonna like everything about it. They are going to get better while this person is just focused on whatever the goal is. There's a saying that if you do what you love, you will never work a day in your life. I learned that is a total crock. You will work harder than you ever thought possible, but the tools will feel light in your hands. Sometimes life's gonna hit you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love, and that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is gonna fill a large part of your life and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. And like any great relationship, it just gets better and better as the years roll on. So keep looking, don't settle. It's just a simple story. There were two nice people. One person built his house on the rock and the other person built his house on the sand. And the storms came, as they always do, and the one that built his house on the rock was saved. And the one that built his house on the sand was lost. Not because he was evil, not because he was bad. Here's what it means. Nice people can make foolish decisions. Let's make sure we build on the rock so that we last forever, not on the sand, and be gone when the storm comes. Please understand that nothing works the first time. What is the average number of times that a person tries with a new goal before they give up? Can you guess? Well, the average is less than one, because most people give up before they try even once. Then they move away to a wonderful place called Sunday Isle. Someday, and most people live on Sunday Isle. Your job and my job is to vote yourself off the island. Learn their handles, Messiah. I challenge you, you know, to pick up a piano and pick up mm. a, um, a, a violin. I challenge you yeah. to not accept the life that's been given to you. You know, just because somebody gave you that life, that does not have to become your reality. I challenge you to go outside of your immediate environment, and I challenge you to explore. You know, I challenge you to discover. I challenge you to learn a second language. Yeah. I challenge you to watch PBS. You know, NPR radio. Like I challenge you to get out of just that world that you've been given. I challenge you to read books. You know, to learn the history of this company. Like I challenge you to be bigger, bolder, and better five years from now, ten years from now. And some of the people that we admire are people who have been exposed yeah. to things that other people haven't been exposed sure, sure. to. Yeah. I think what people get confused is, you know, they're grinding with a goal. And I'm not saying you shouldn't have goals. 
but you should be grinding for grinding's sake. Mm. You know, you should grind because that's what you do. You're passionate about what you do, you know, and so you're waking up every day with this concept of, I have 24 hours and they're mine. This 24 hours belongs to me. Right. And whatever I do in this 24 hours will determine where I'll be tomorrow and the next day. And I think that's what people need to focus on. Like, get off of this, I wanna make six figures. I wanna drive this car, I wanna live in this house. I think what people should be focusing on is, I have 24 hours. Like, Oprah only has 24. Yeah. Bill Gates only has 24. Like, Warren Buffett only has 24 hours and in that 24 hour period, I can either break my life or make my life. I just think that goals for people is too high on the priority list. And I think what should be on the priority list is going to bed so you can wake up the next day and you can grind it out. Mm. And I'm just a dude that believes you reap what you sow. So if you're grinding on Monday, grind it on Tuesday, grind it on Wednesday. If you're grinding six, seven days a week, for, for a span of five or six years, something's gotta come out of that. Sure. And what I found is that instead of trying to live a successful life, if you aim to have a successful day, you know, just, you know, 12, if you have 13 out of the 24 hours of your day, if you won those hours, um, you won the day. And if you win most of the days in a week, you won the week. You know, we're, we just need a simple majority here, right? If you win, you know, most of the weeks in a month, there you go, most of the months in a year, most of the years yeah, in a life. And, and all of a sudden, look at that. Without even trying, you've been able to kind of get somewhere. People misunderstand money, okay, just like fundamentally. And it's actually not money. They misunderstand themselves. They misunderstand what they actually want. What people want is fulfillment. What people want is to feel good. And they think that, wow, if I had, be, and, and here's the truth. What they know is when they buy something, it does feel good. And they know if I could buy my mom a house, like that would feel good. If I could buy her a big house, a fancy car, make me feel good. And it is all 100% true. Buying a fancy car will make you feel good. Buying a big house will make you feel good. Yeah. But it makes you feel good the way a bowl of ice cream makes you feel good. <laughs> it's momentary happiness. Yeah. It's transient. It will go away. The hedonic reset point. So you buy the big house and all of a sudden that's normal, baby. And so you really have to stop and like, A, remind yourself to be grateful for that. But B, recognize that all the things you thought money were, was going to bring you, it brings you something completely different. And if you want fulfillment, fulfillment is about being something, becoming something that's born of suffering. It is not born of having a cool car because you want a cool car because of the way you want other people to look at you. Right. And the way right. that will make you feel when you think that they look at you like that. Exactly. So it's tenuous at best and it hinges entirely on them actually looking at you that way. So now you're somebody else's pawn because they can turn on you at any minute. So that's never going to bring you lasting fulfillment. It's not stable. It doesn't make you feel strong and rooted. But becoming somebody, setting your sights on gaining certain skill sets, of feeling a certain way, of being calm, um, being you know full of gratitude, like all the things from a neurochemical standpoint that we read as good, like though none of money can't touch those things. Um, so working on what I call framework happiness is the key to all that stuff, and money can't give you framework happiness. I made the decision, it's the most important decision I believe of your life, that I'm not gonna suffer anymore, life's too short to suffer, and I'm gonna live in a beautiful state every day, and the way I do it is, I catch myself when I start to get that sense of stress, I let it go, and I see the idea go by. So your thoughts, thoughts about this person messing up your business, you're not following through, if I was in a room with 10,000 people, I guarantee you 60, 70% of the business owners have the same thoughts at times, right? I ask people all the time, tell me your most stressful thought. Oh, I'm worried about my children, this may happen. How many people have had that thought? Everybody. Uh, I might not make it financially, blah, blah, blah. How many have had that? Everybody. My point is, it's not your thought. It's the mind, not your mind. When you think it's your mind, you identify with it, and it's, you can't separate from yourself. Right. But when you realize, these thoughts have been around for millions of years. And I'm just thinking the same thought that so many people thought before. Like how many people have ever thought, I'm gonna kill this son of a bitch. Now you didn't do it, but you didn't believe you're really gonna kill him. But you felt it, you said it, you were there, right? So we all have thoughts. It's only the stressful thoughts we believe that mess us up. So what I try to show people is, if you can start to realize these thoughts have been around for millions of years. So what I want you to realize is thoughts are invisible way. When you turn on TV, it takes invisible waves, and depending on the channel, you're going to see a love story, or an adventure, or a drama, 
or a comedy or or a horror the way you use your body determines which of those thought waves come through you mm. one moment you're off the next moment somebody makes you laugh you change your body you change the channel you change what comes through you so what i've tried to do in this area beautiful state is simple first identify where you're suffering what's your favorite flavor are you a warrior are you a off person Stressed, angry what is it you do yeah. second of all decide you're going to kill that monster while it's little you're not going to wait till it's godzilla taking the city you're going to break the pattern you start to feel the stress you see it as thoughts going by and then you focus on something you appreciate enjoy or love appreciation love and joy destroy suffering you can't be grateful and angry simultaneously it's possible you can't be worried and fearful and, and grateful simultaneously so i tell people gratitude is one of the emotions to cultivate that will destroy the suffering yeah. and that's what we teach people to do if you're not trying to get out of your situation in every day you're choosing to stay in it and you can't complain about being given the choice you keep making you know, I, I, one of my favorite quotes is, um, change happens when the pain of staying the same becomes greater than the pain of making a change. And I, I really do believe that. So when I, when I hear people complain, I, I'm knowing they're not changing it, I think maybe it's not hurting them enough for them to fight to get out. Complaining causes negativity, which causes you to complain, which causes negativity. And there are a few actionable things you can do to immediately stop this negative cycle and to break out of it. And the first one is actually just changing your perception. You know, if you can't change it, then at least change the way you think about it. Someone said, um, the brain doesn't just observe the world, it projects a second story of everything we see. That story is our perception. We can complain rose bushes have thorns, or we can rejoice that thorn bushes have roses. Perception defines everyone's reality. The second thing is about in your internal locus of control. Take responsibility. If you don't take responsibility, then you're choosing to be a victim of circumstance. And this victim mindset dilutes human potential. It kills action. And by not accepting personal responsibility for your own circumstances, you're greatly reducing the power you have to change it. And there are two primary choices we all make in life. It is to accept conditions as they are, or to accept the responsibility for changing them. Please choose the latter. And the last one, which is the most important of all, is making a change. Einstein said, as we all know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. And for every action, we have a reaction. If you want a new reaction, you must perform a new action. I found in my life that change starts with a big decision and a tiny step. Today, right now, yesterday was the time to make that decision. It's time to take that step. Henry Ford said it better in that book, Think and Grow Rich, you probably read it. He said, successful people make decisions quickly and they're slow to, to change their mind. Unsuccessful people hardly ever make up their mind, and when they do, they're constantly changing it back and forth, they're wishy-washy, like, do I want this, do I want that? And they have so much indecision. Indecision is what kills confidence. And here's the thing, success, the ability to make great decisions in your life, comes from experience. And your experience usually comes from bad judgment. So it doesn't, it's not about making the right decision. The leaders, successful people don't always make the right decision, but they always make the decision right. That is, no matter what happens, they go for it, and then they know they're gonna figure it out in the end because they're clear about their outcome. But you gotta take decisions. You can't be paralyzed by fear and say, oh, what am I gonna do? So the first decision is what to focus on. Right now, as you're sitting there, you're probably on Facebook, on YouTube, something like that. You could be focused on this video. You could be focused on the iPhone. You could be focused on something that happened a year ago. You could be something that's gonna happen in the future. But like they say in that book, uh, Eckhart Tolle says in The Power of Now, that your life is happening now. You're most powerful when you are operating in the now. Some people are trying to change things that happened in the past. They think that that hadn't happened, or if she hadn't said that, or if I had done that before, I didn't mess up before. And their energy, their focus, even though they're talking to you, they're locked in your eyes right there, there's a part of them energetically that is focused on something in the past. Does that make sense? their energy, their focus. Every time anything bad happens, they're like, well, if this hadn't happened before, their mind always goes there, is that they have a pattern, a habit of focus. And so the most powerful thing you can do is be focused in the moment because this is where your life happens. And if you're trying to control things that are in the future or even in the past, 
you set yourself up for disappointment because you can't change the past and you you can influence the future but you can't change the future you know there's a lot of people out there doing a lot of things some people have a big impact on the world but hey there's times things are going to happen so you don't really know but you still have to make decisions with absolute certainty you have to have a vision within yourself so the first decision you need to make every single day is what are you going to focus on what are you going to give your time and your attention to that's decision number one every second you spend thinking about what somebody else has is taking away from time that you could create something for yourself. Yeah. You're, you're losing. You're losing because you're laying in your bed looking at somebody's glamorous photoshopped picture of them doing something cool and you're envious and you're jealous and you're impatient and it's crippling your upside. You've got to deploy patience and you've got to love the process. I'm addicted to the process of the battle scars, the setbacks. Macro patience, micro speed. Life breaks everyone, and some are stronger in the places that broke. Um, we are going to go through trauma, but trauma is an opportunity to change and to um, reorganize the elements that made up your life. When a person's mind is traumatized, it's like the story that they were telling themselves has ceased to be persuasive, right? And when a story stops being persuasive, um, it is disorienting and that I think is what trauma is. The period between when you, when your old story breaks apart because of this last straw on the camel's back thing. I mean, we're gonna continue to tell ourselves the old stories until it's so glaringly contradictory that it doesn't hold up. So trauma is the period between when that breaks down and when you, from the pieces of the old, build something new. Um, and we'll never glorify the trauma itself. But recognize that in that period, you have a very unique opportunity that will only come along a handful of times in your life to reorganize the story that you tell about yourself to yourself. Reticular activation system and our ability to rationalize our behavior is so pervasive and so powerful that our brains will rationalize almost anything that it thinks is in its best interest. So if, if, a, if a person gets to a point where they have become addicted to the laziness, what typically is going to happen is their reticular activation system is going to activate in such a way where they're going to justify the laziness. And what's really psycho about this and su super scary, this is scary to me because I've, I've seen this happen to friends of mine, is that they have to, they rationalize the laziness with a set of lies to themselves or like half truths. But then remember that anytime that you lie to yourself, what happens, what happens as you build further beliefs on that foundation? More lies, more lies, more lies, more lies, and it becomes a web. Once the person has got addicted to that emotion of laziness, the, uh, the emotion has entered into their body and it wants to self-perpetuate. So once that person gets in that emotion that they want to sustain it, they desperately want to sustain it, they will typically not come out of it. And actually, they become lost. They're lost now. Because what happens is that they, uh, they fall too far off the path. And so there's been too much rationalization, too much lying to themselves about why they're doing it, that the only way, oh, and by the way, and this is further sustaining that addiction to the, to, the, to the lazy emotions, the only way that they can come back is if they're forced out of it, something forces them out of it, where it's just too painful to preserve the laziness and to preserve the lies that they would have to come out of it. And so, what, you know what's cool about hard work? It brings you back to reality again and again and again and again. Because when you take on projects and you have a purpose and you have passion about it, what happens is that you, you have these little lies and about how the world should be that you tell yourself and then it doesn't work out and you're confronted with reality. When you're actually trying to do shit, you're continually confronted with reality. You're out of this white ivory tower mind state. Looking at everything almost like a skill set. Everything is a matter of practice. I mean, of course, are you going to be the next Kobe or the next Michael Jordan or the next Albert Einstein or the next Elon Musk? That there might be, of course, a degree of luck and talent, especially in sports, but still, you can become pretty damn good at a lot of things if you put in the effort, if you put in the hours of deliberate practice as... Right. I mean, if, 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 if other people are putting in 40-hour work weeks and you're putting in 100-hour work weeks, then even if uh, you're doing the same thing, you know that 
in in one year you will achieve what they achieve. You you will achieve in four months what it takes them a year to achieve. Going to be different for everyone, but we're all asking the same question: It's how do I live a more meaningful life? And, and part of that has to do with just changing our focus to、yeah. figure out what's important. On the other side of your pain is something good. Getting comfortable with fear,、yeah. understanding that you can overcome fear, you can overcome doubt, those things that hold you back. Courage is the thing that drives through anything that's going to be in your way and try to hold you back. Courage is the thing that should get that should be the driving factor to get you through whatever that is. You know, growing your tolerance for risk and understanding that failure is part of that process, mistakes are part of that process. If you're not making mistakes, you're not moving forward. So, in order for you to, to have that kind of mindset. To learn, you got to test different things. You got to go, you know, test and pivot, and things are going to happen. Like you need to have courage to try new things. Work. That's the answer to all these questions. Got learn, it. Learn things, do stuff, try to sell, learn how to make money, work. All right. I will. Was this good? So how do I do it? How, how, how do I turn my dreams into reality? What's the first thing anyone does before they start their day? You wake up. The life you dream to live is hidden within the choices you avoid every day. Start to make some of those choices, and the life you dream to live becomes your reality. Most of us, we live in a box. And we don't want to go outside that box at all, ever. Outside that box is all these possibilities of life. But we do we shackle our mind. We are a prisoner in our own mind. That this is all I can do. This is all I'm good at. And we 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 take away the possibilities. Of, you could be this. You could be all these things. What people don't understand is that they live for themselves, not knowing that you have the power within yourself to change. Millions of lives by facing life, by facing yourself. If you can master your emotions, if you can master the things that you know you need to be doing and actually do them, that's how you get anything you want in life. A lot of our time on a daily basis is spent convincing ourselves to do the things that we know we should be doing.、It's、half of our life we waste trying to convince ourselves to go, and then you realize a day has gone by, a day has gone by. Consistency is the only answer to anything. If you don't want your ship to capsize in a storm, you steer into the waves. You plow into the waves. If you turn the stern of your boat away, you're going to get swamped. If you go sideways to the waves, you're going to get swamped. Stand there on that deck, get a hold of that wheel, and you steer into the storm, into the waves, and you get out the other side. And no storm lasts forever. Don't quit. Only person who can judge you on your success is you, because you're the only one who knows how much left in the tank you really had. And the better you get, you start winning exteriorly, and that's when people are like, "It felt so empty." It's because they didn't actually work as hard as they could have. They just worked hard enough to beat everyone else. But that discrepancy between how hard you could have worked to work your hardest versus what was required in order to win, to me, that's the opportunity that's shifting towards the work being the goal. It's a it's a lifestyle, really, and an understanding、um, that every day you're trying to get better, right? You get better today.、Um, you try to be better today than you were yesterday, right? And so the the test that I always did since ever since I was a kid, and I, is at the end of every day, you look yourself in the mirror and you ask yourself, "Did I get better today?" If the answer is yes, and you do that for five years, ten years, fifteen years, how much better are you going to be? And, that, and that's: Are you getting better every single day? That's the question. 
you were to leave your car in the driveway for like five years and then tried to start it up again, what do you think would happen? You'd probably have a hard time getting it out of the driveway. A car is only a car when it moves you from point A to point B. And if you leave a car sitting dormant in the driveway, it's no longer a car, it is a decoration in your driveway. And human beings are no different. Human beings are human beings so long as they are doing things, creating things, building things, moving, exercising. If you sit there sedentary, doing nothing but consume information, well, you're not being a human being at all. We are meant to build. We are meant to create. And once we stop doing those things, we stop being human altogether. We become, just like the car on the driveway, a decoration, but in our house. We have a bunch of people that want to point fingers and defer responsibility off to anything and everything except the one thing that can change their entire lives. And that's looking in the f***ing mirror and saying, you did this to me, you made me this way, and I'm going to fix it. And I'm going to fix it by controlling all the things I can control. I'm going to control what I eat. I'm going to control what I drink. I'm going to control how I move. I'm going to control the information I put in my brain. I'm going to control how I treat people and who I surround myself with. And if you control those things, you are now in the driver's seat to create what it is you've always known that you were here to create. Be sad, but get up. You can't stay stuck forever. If there was ever a time to turn things around, it's now. Stop waiting for things to feel normal again. You need to be the one to take the first step. Put in the effort. Make the decision today, because the only person that can save you is you. In life, people emulate the end result, not the process. The end result is what they see, and they emulate that. Before Kobe scored that 61, that day he was practicing. He practiced his whole life. Are you willing to put in that sort of commitment? Are you willing to practice the whole life? Yeah, I'm sure you want to be on a jet and all that, but do you want to put in that work? That's what it takes for something great, that amount of time, that level of commitment. We try so hard in our lives to fit in. We try to fit into certain groups, you know, among certain friends, yet the people we idolize are most are the ones that stand out. But when you're prepared, there is no fear. There is no fear of failure, okay? Because even if you've walked out of something and feel like you failed at it, your preparation is so strong that you're gonna take that failure and turn it into the outcome you desire. And most people stop at failure, okay? We've all failed at things. I'm gonna continue to fail at stuff, right? It's the most powerful tool you can use. It's that drive inside of you, okay? It's what we talk about, the dark side. The dark side is filled with failure, but it's the fuel that burns you like something that's never burned inside you before. Privilege of a lifetime is being who you are. I don't care what you have to say about me. This is who I am. The good and the bad, the mess, the beauty, the joy, the privilege of a lifetime is being who you are.